This video is for educational purposes only. Viewer discretion is advised. Here we go. So they told me you're not making the Uber because it's too much food? I ain't making no 13 sandwiches with the way tonight's gone going. I'm, there's only three cars here. At the moment. It's one in the morning. Yeah, we've been getting slammed all night. That doesn't matter. It's your job. I, I can refuse any order. So you're going to refuse your best sale of the night? Me showing up to this place doesn't make sense to begin with. Well, like, us store dashers, it's not our fault that you don't want to make the order. Like, we have to make money, too. Like... And those people should have had a little more consideration before putting that order in. But it's McDonald's. They they have yeah, the right to a, put it in... it's not a feed-a-family. It's supposed to be fast food, not a feed-a-family because you're too lazy to cook. Well, for all you know, they're sitting there having a big party. It's Memorial and that, Day and weekend. And that's stupidity for not supplying food. For not supplying... They ordered McDonald's. Yeah, if you're going to have a party, you don't order McDonald's. You cook. But that's how McDonald's, like, stays open. That's how you are able to yeah, get paid. Yeah, and the and the supervisor already wants to shut down the overnights, and I already told him to go ahead. Oh, so I'm tired of this Well, I can, I can wait for you to make that order. Like, that's not the issue. If you want to hold up this line for 20 minutes, I don't care. But I got to make money, too. So it's either I make the food or you just sit there, huh? No, I'm not just going to sit here. Fine, I'll make the board. I'm not going to guarantee it's going to be right. All right. And just pull up there. And you just smashed a window? Come on, guys. Haven't you seen Snowpiercer? We're all on the tail section of the train and we're only fighting one another. You know what needs to be talked about more is how hard it is to get up and go to your job when you are awake. When you see through this whole system and you know how everything operates and you know why it operates and you know who benefits from, from the entire system, when you know all of that and you see through it, it is so difficult to get up and go to your normal routine job and pretend like everything's fine to pay your car registration to pay your taxes to participate in society like a normal person without saying anything without talking to anybody because you're going to be labeled as crazy it's really really exhausting because money is printed out of thin air and we know why wars are started we know who benefits from them and knowing all of that Yet we still have to wake up and pretend and go to work and clock in and do our job like we don't know this whole entire other world. There are things you cannot unsee and I won't knock you down if you still have to go to that 9 or 5. But use what you learned to navigate better through all this. You're not alone and our time will come. Are you prepared? Mentally at least. The cost of living crisis suddenly we went up from prices being around there to prices being there and you don't really see that in this data okay because inflation is really just measuring the difference between that and that and if you look at those two lines you're talking about a 2.3 percent change that's the number we're talking about today but for a lot of people it's not about that it's about the difference between this and that and when you look at the difference between this and that that's 20 percent and I think that's the dichotomy here between these inflation numbers where it looks normal and this, which is really not normal at all. If the taxes we're paying are being used righteously, I wouldn't mind, but something inside me is telling us that it's not. And you can feel it too, right? People think that if we give up the weapons, the government will start to get tyrannical. Start. They'll start. What do you think the government would do if, if we didn't have the weapons? Let's think of it. Let's brainstorm. Do you think potentially government might start spying on everybody, listening to their phone calls and reading their emails? Do you think possibly the government might totally suspend habeas corpus and say that they could de de decide that you were an enemy combatant? and lock you up in prison and not charge you with a crime and keep you there indefinitely and torture you? You think the government would start doing that? You think the government would start taking whistleblowers and locking them in little boxes and making them go insane when they've said things like the military is slaughtering civilians and the NSA 
He's acting without congressional authority to just wiretap everybody. You think the CIA might start spying on the Senate Intelligence Committee and destroying tapes of their interrogation, which many people and experts have said is tantamount to torture? Do you think elites would start engaging in illicit sexual behavior like Philia on private islands? And that if that ever came to light, they might potentially murder the person who was about to testify, even though he was in a maximum security prison in New York City. Do you think they would get us into endless wars without any explanation? Do you think they would murder journalists? Do you think they would do all those things if we gave up the guns? Because we got an arsenal of guns. And everything that I just mentioned is fucking business as fucking usual. Do what you will with that information, brothers and sisters. Are you enjoying the show so far? Please do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe button. I make videos like this every day, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. The Super Bowl theory. On Sunday, this will prove if it's really true. So there's a Super Bowl theory going around where in the middle of the season, the, the NFL releases um, a logo of the Super Bowl mm -hmm. uh, based on like oh, when it's being thrown and like all the settings and that. And they choose two colors yeah. of the Super Bowl. So the past two years, they've been correct. And they're saying this year, it might predict it again. Uh, last year's Super Bowl, when it was in Miami, the logo colors were orange and yellow. So it was the Super Bowl, whatever, mm -hmm. 2000 thing, it would be orange and yellow. That year, it was the Bengals and Rams yeah. that were in the Super Bowl. So they predicted it. And then last year in Arizona, the Super Bowl was green and red. And that matchup was the Eagles and Chiefs. There was both red and green. So they know what, what teams are going to play. Are, so this year, so if they predicted it correct this year, it already came out. It's purple and red. So the really popular ones to win right now are the Ravens. They're purple. Yeah. The really popular ones on the other side is the 49ers. They're red. Mm. So imagine if this shit happens three times in a row. So so that's the tell. Yeah, that's the tell. The mid-season low. It took a while before people accepted the fact that pro wrestling is scripted. But now, it's like there was never a doubt about its legitimacy. Have you seen the Brady Roast? They're telling it to you little bit to little. So you've been lied to about this. Our founding fathers were not old, contrary to our current government. Every time I ask students to describe the founding fathers in three words, I hear old white men. But on July 4th, 1776, James Monroe was 18 years old. Aaron Burr was 20. John Marshall was 20. Alexander Hamilton was only 21 years old. Betsy Ross was 24. James Madison was 25. Thomas Jefferson was only 33 on July 4th, 1776. Meanwhile, the other day, I'm watching the State of the Union and I feel like I am watching a live simulcast of the world's most expensive nursing home. If you are a teenager or a college student or a young adult and you want to make a difference, stop waiting for permission for leadership from the people who refuse to leave office and have been in Washington, D.C. longer than twice the time we've been alive, who can't remember their own name, or who were born before the invention of the microwave oven. Yeah. To the younger generations who got inspired by this and planned to make meaningful change there are people supporting you time will come and you will get to meet us am i the only one tripping off the fact that these motherfuckers aren't even trying to appeal to the average american voter at this point they're doing shit that the average voter does not agree with like they're not even waiting till after the election or nothing like they're just fucking passing whatever the fuck with like there's no consequences like there's not an election coming up in november Biden's tanking in the polls and they're just still carrying along doing whatever the fuck they want to do sending more money overseas fucking trying to ban TikTok, rewriting fucking article 9 passing legislation that fucking allows them to snoop on Americans without a warrant like like they're not trying to appease to Ameri Americans at all and it's a election year Usually this is where they pull out all the tricks to make everybody happy and to fucking get them to feel all good to vote for them. This administration ain't fucking doing that shit. Am I the only one that's noticing this shit? Some fucking weird shit going on, bro. In their minds, I think people will eat up whatever we feed them. So why bother crafting a beautiful lie? We can give them the truth and still they won't do anything about it.
it was a different time back then nowadays it's different too it's just a different different you know what i mean I bet it's those darn cows. No. Okay. Uh, seven twelve. Sure. Is it twelve ten? Twelve ten. Twelve oh nine. Twelve oh nine. Yeah, you're close. No, nine twenty five. Nine twenty five. Close. You're five minutes off. Oh. The thing is nine oh two. Nine oh two. Two oh nine. Two oh nine. Okay. Nine oh two. Why would it be nine oh two? Why would we be in school at nine oh two? Why wouldn't we be in school at 902? Okay. Yeah. So what's the conclusion, guys? 902, 209. Okay, let's let the viewers decide. Like 674. Is it 3 o'clock? AM or PM? Gotta be AM, bro. Okay. The televisions emit x-rays. This is fascinating. You can go into Google and type in, do televisions emit x-rays? See what you come up with, and you will get a big positive yes. Now that's interesting, because remember, when you go to get an x-ray, what do they do? They have like, make you wear a whole suit. They put like all this shielding around you so that you can only get that area, but the television is legally allowed to emit x-rays. So not only are you using patents which are trying to mind control my mind and pretty much change the brain into the alpha brain state so that I can be controlled and manipulated and told whatever story you want me to tell you, but then you are also going to emit x-rays. And how long do children usually sit in front of a television? Let's say eight hours. That's a long time to be an x-ray. Now the question is, is do tablets and computers do the same exact thing in the current day state? Now children are holding tablets and devices at such an early age being exposed to frequencies and different types of things, what's that doing to their brain as well? And also too now being exposed to a lot of radiation and a lot of technology in which the mind has never been exposed to at such an early age especially. One of the most underrated things that you can do for your brain that slows neurodegeneration, slows the decay of the brain and offsets and reduces the risk of things like Alzheimer's is doing something that fills you with awe. They've done studies where they look at factors which reduce the risk of dementia and neurodegeneration. There's the obvious things. Exercise is good for the brain, improves blood flow, etc. Sleep. It clears away all the toxic proteins. Having social interactions with other people, that is good for the brains. Humans are social creatures. Yeah. Another thing which is underrated but backed in science is having that awe. And that awe can be as simple as going for a walk or a hike in nature yeah. or just doing something which just is a deeply profound experience. The strange truth that you have never known part 150. Besides the pyramids, this is one of the most mysterious things left behind by the ancient Egyptians, which are 24 stone coffins each weighing about 100 tons transported by the ancient Egyptians down an artificial underground cave system. And the coffin located on this upper pathway will reveal to us some truly unbelievable things. As we can see, the passageway within the cave is extremely narrow, making it very difficult to transport or craft anything down here. This coffin, on the other hand, remains an unworked block of stone that was abandoned in the middle of its creation. Its lid, which was left behind at the cave entrance, suggests that these 24 coffins were transported from the outside as raw blocks of stone. They were brought through the narrow passageways to reach the main chamber where they would be fully crafted and placed in their intended positions. However, what truly amazed archaeologists was that once completed, these coffins were incredibly precise, with all of them being perfectly cut and squared at 90 degree angles. Furthermore, the inner surfaces were so polished that they reflected like a mirror, making it hard to believe that these were made from raw blocks of stone. To create the hollow interior, the ancient craftsmen had to cut all four sides from top to bottom, including the inner bottom surface. Despite this, somehow they managed to craft them with such precision that they appear to be the product of a laser cutting machine. That's it for today everyone. We'll end the video with the next clip. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you all for showing up and stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you around.